My name is Kabir, Kabir Jeet Singh. Um, I'm the founder of Burger Singh. This 430 crore burger chain makes more than 100 crores a year in revenue and is stealing market share away from McDonald's and Burger King in India. In the last 10 years, Burger Singh has become India's largest domestic burger chain with more than 175 outlets in 75 plus cities. Welcome to a new episode of the Profitable Startup Series on the GrowthX Wireframe. In this episode, we will dive into four core strategies Kabir Jeet Singh used to make Burger Singh a QSR giant with 90% of their stores being profitable. And how this desi guy is bringing the fight to the big American boss. But as with everything Grothex, let's get down to some context first. First off, the food and beverage industry is brutal. 80% restaurants fail within the first five years. It takes eight months for a restaurant to break even. In fact, McDonald's India was making losses till 2018 and Burger King India this lost 40 crores in their last quarter. As I said, brutal. Which is why the story of Burger Singh is so damn interesting. But despite these brutal stats, by the way, everyone is bullish on the Indian QSR ecosystem. The valuations are through the roof and big companies like Devyani International, Westlife and Jubilant that run American brands like Pizza Hut, KFC and McDonald's are trading at insane valuations. And if you look just at the India-based burger brands, many new ones have popped and they're doing good. In fact, almost all of them have roughly 100 or more stores in 15 plus cities. But Burger Singh stands out because it's the fastest growing brand with the largest penetration compared to all of them. We could probably see doing two, 3,000 stores in India itself. But how Burger Singh started is super interesting. See, in 2007, Kabir Jeet Singh, the founder of Burger Singh, was doing his MBA in the UK. And just like every other Indian student, he was short of cash and had to do multiple side hustles to earn that extra buck. So he started working at a burger restaurant. This is where Kabir found out that burgers that they were serving lacked the desi masala that he was used to. So being his Punjabi self, he started mixing a spice mixture in his burger patties for his own meals. But slowly he started sharing it with everybody in the restaurant and everybody around him went gaga over the taste. They fell in love with his fusion burgers. And his desi fusion burgers were even put on menu specials at one of the restaurants that he was working in. The customer started loving them and they gave him the name and started calling him the Burger Sink. This was his Eureka moment to come and disrupt the FNB space in India. And in 2014, he started Burger Sink with Nitin Rana, a childhood school buddy of his who had worked for a decade in QSR brands like Pizza Hut, TJIF, and KFC. He was an operational expert and probably the best co-founder Kabir could have asked for. Now, with that context in mind, let's get down to the core insights Burger Singh cracked to get here. Starting with the product insight. See, when Kabir started, their core product philosophy was simple, to differentiate and not to compete. He knew that a war with big chains like McDonald's and Burger King is probably not the best way to start his business. So to differentiate his product in the market, he took care of three main things first. And the first thing was product quantity, and quality. He knew that Indian consumers want the best value for money. I mean, there's a reason why Mekalu Tiki is the most sold burger in the country. So he doubled down on this, be it buns, patties and sauces. He took his sweet time researching each one of these and getting the right suppliers. See, initially he wanted to serve the best desi gourmet burgers. So they made their burgers a little fancier and a little different. But later he realized that Indians care a lot about how filling a certain meal is. If you keep your burger light, they would have to order twice and this would 2x the bill. And nobody wants that, even I don't want it. So he kept his burgers 20% bigger. It's simple. The bigger, the better. The aim was to finish the hunger with one single burger itself. But Kabir also knew that Indians cared about quality as much as quantity. And remember, this is 2014. There was no Swiggy, no Zomato to give you 20 minute deliveries. So he worked with food technologists to create moisture barriers that prevented juices from slipping into the lower bun. He didn't want the burgers to get soggy because soggy meant a bad experience and bad experience meant no return orders. The second thing he cracked is solid standardization and good suppliers. And the only way to build a QSR business is solid SOPs. Why? Well, see, a QSR business is not like a family-run restaurant. In a family restaurant business, you can have oversight because you'll have like two restaurants at max near to each other. But imagine, a QSR will have at least 100 outlets where nothing is really made fresh on the spot. So it essentially becomes an assembly line business. 
because most of the food has been made already it's frozen and then it's supplied to all the outlets where people in the outlets make the dish and assemble it when it's ordered so execution and hiring the right staff is where the real magic happens and kabir was super particular about this so for suppliers he went to each and every vendor in india but chose the best ones from bombay and hyderabad he did the same for spices he tied up with the best vendors in punjab and bihar and the third thing he cracked was variety si kabir knew that indians love options and more variety equals to a higher chance of customers trying at least the basic variant that they had once a customer has tried the basic variant which is one burger they could later upsell them on other variants so to promote the identity of burger singh as the desi burger kabir started with a menu of 28 different burgers and his idea was to represent each indian state with one burger on his menu see even if you see their menu now burgers like chicken united states of punjab and amritsari murg burger sounds so different right off the bat so whenever customers saw these quirky names they found the menu interesting and they decided to give it a shot now he cracked these crazy product insights but talking about product insight we want to give a massive shout out to praveen a founder from the growthx community who was recently on shark tank pitching his product to hands The amount of user insight and clarity he had behind building the right product for India's shopkeepers was massive and was clearly shown in the episode. This is exactly what we teach during the first 8 weeks of the GrowthX learning experience. If you want to get a feeler of the depth GrowthX members have, come to the GrowthX demo day happening online on 10th of March. It's a mecca of growth where the startup ecosystem comes to learn the science of revenue led growth. The link to grab your free invite is in the description. And of course, there are limited passes. So head on over to the link now. Awesome. Coming to the second thing Burger Singh cracked. See, when Burger Singh started, they thought that their moat was the delivery side. And because of it, initially, they were charging a much higher price, say 300 bucks for their burgers. They were not the next door affordable burger brand. because simple right kabir didn't want to enter into a price war with the mcdonalds and the burger kings of the world but soon zomato and swiggy would come into the picture and it destroyed their delivery moat that they had built so kabir had no option but to pivot and this is when burger singh went from premium to the affordable burger brand that we know today they started charging 8% less for 20% bigger burgers In fact, they started changing their brand communications. They started launching crazy offers like the cheapest burger at 39 rupees and complimentary fries for 1 rupee. This opened doors to an entirely new market, a market that even McDonald's and other QSR brands wouldn't focus on. And this is their third strategy, the tier 2 and tier 3 focus. See look at the data of 2021. Most brands have one clear focus, tier 1, and only 50% or less than that of their outlets are in tier 2 and 3D. Burger Singh wanted to do the exact opposite. If you look at the store data they have, tier 1 cities only comprise of 35% of their entire store distribution. Tier 2 cities have about 42% and tier 3 cities comprise nearly 22%. So 65% of their stores are in tier 2 and tier 3. This is where Burger Singh found their core audience. Most Indian tier 1 cities are eating out roughly twice a week. which is somewhat lesser compared to 3 to 5 times a week in China and the US but we all know as the economy grows and disposable income increases this trend will soon penetrate down into tier 2 and 3 cities and they will go out more and once a loyal fan base of burger singh is established here a bigger expansion won't be a problem brands like misho are paving the path ahead for them the fourth thing they crack is distribution when we talk about a qsr business it comes down to franchises because that's the fastest way for qsr companies to scale in fact burger singh only owns 30% of all of their stores the rest 70% are run as franchises there's depth in how kabir chooses franchisee owners so first is who they give franchises to see it's simple if you come from a wealthy family you will not get a burger singh franchise why he wants the franchisee owners to be really serious about running these outlets and not treat them as side gigs that's why they've always preferred folks with some corporate work experience who have over the years built enough corpus to start something of their own they have the hustle built into them and also they want to ensure that people have enough skin in the game and why they do this is simple give franchises to the wrong people and it affects the customer experience and hampers the brand name massively in the long run the staff might be bad they might not adhere to quality standards 
and all of that jazz. The second thing they do is expansion using database city mapping. Think about the time when you saw McDonald's and then saw another one within 10 minutes of your travel. See, Kabi knew that they don't have that level of popularity yet and opening a second store so close to the first one will eat the sales of the other one. Which is why they use database city mapping. Kabi's team never lets the franchisee owner decide the area they want to open a store in, but rather they tell the franchisee owners that these are the options where an outlet will work and they can only open one there. They control the entire location decision. This also aligns with their hub and spoke model, where there is one giant hub, which is a warehouse. Cooked frozen food is transferred from this warehouse to all the outlets. Now to make sure the transportation is efficient, it becomes very important to analyze the distance between the warehouse and these outlets and it all comes together beautifully in the way Burger Singh analyzes their data. Think about how Burger Singh will expand into Bangalore, for example. They will first pick an area, say Indra Nagar, which is where our studio is. Then they'll open self-owned stores in the area operate it for a few months till they get to predictable sales, footfall and profitability. And once that is achieved, only then will they sell franchisee rights for areas that they want to now target. And you'll see this happening in Bangalore when they come here. And the third thing they cracked in their franchisee model is research and this is fascinating. See, if you ever visit a Burger Singh, you'll see that it's way smaller than other QSR chains. And that's deliberate. See, their philosophy is simple capture large volumes, build small stores. And this is where research plays a big role. They buy research from companies like Nielsen and analyze three things, spending power of the location, average expected volumes, and rentals. Basically, the idea is to make rental costs as low as possible at the best volume locations and keep the path to profitability super clear. And that was Burger Singh's story and how they're fighting the big boys like McDonald's and Burger King. By the way, our YouTube fam is not 200,000 strong. Thanks a lot for helping us reach this milestone and for being with us throughout. I can tell you the GrowthX team is working extremely hard to keep increasing the bar of content quality that comes out of this channel. Now, if you want a breakdown of a certain company or a sector, do let us know in the comments and we'll make sure to cover the most interesting one. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.